Today, I am here with Kelly Santos, and Kelly is an intuitive and life coach. She specializes in health and wellness, and she's guiding you on your soul's right path. Her mission is to help you live your best life with healthy foods, holistic lifestyle, and soul-inspired guidance, nurturing your body, mind, and soul so that you thrive. Cool. So Kelly, you have an interesting journey because not many people have an autoimmune disorder. Right. Can you describe that and what that has meant to you and how it's informed your path? Sure. Um, well, first, just to note, the autoimmune disorder is not active currently. So that happened about... I would say it was about six years ago. And um, when I was a kid, I had eczema because of poor diet, basically because my parents weren't informed on food and how to properly eat, okay? Um, as well as I wasn't breastfed and there was a couple of other factors. Um, but then about six years ago, yes, I had an outbreak of where um, my entire body was just covered in like a red rash, you know, it felt like I was like burning from the inside out, you know, like there was like a fire inside of me. It's the only way I could explain it. And I totally felt out of control. I didn't know what was going on with my body, which is a very scary feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I even went to the doctors and they couldn't figure it out. They didn't know what was going on, you know. And in fact, the one doctor I did go to, a dermatologist, um, he gave me, um, what, what is that called? He gave me, um, a, um, do you know those, what, what are those meds uh, called? Plastic surgery injections. The, um, no, 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 no. He gave me a pill to help clear up, um, everything. It's, um, I forget the name of it. I'm so sorry, but it's what most doctors will give you when you go to them with a skin disorder. Okay. Gotcha. So he gave me that and he was like, well, it's a gamble. It could either go away completely or it will come back like tenfold. <sighs> and it, basically I took this pill for a couple of days and it came back like tenfold. Oh, so it was even horrible. So I had to get off of the pill and I was like, I'm just going to do it naturally and holistically. And, um, so that's what I did. Were you in pain this whole time? Like I'm a, you know, the image oh, of a fire. Oh, ow. Yeah, I was in so much pain. It was, it was painful to shower. It was painful to move even because my skin was so dry and cracked that even like moving, it felt like I was like in a turtle shell. If you could imagine that. Tight. Yeah, it was very tight, a very tight feeling. Got you. Okay, yeah. so you, you've just gone to like, a bunch of doctors and they don't know what's going on. And then you finally give one that has a answer, but it makes things worse. Right. That sucks. But yeah. you continue on. Yes. Where do, where do you go after that? Um, well, shortly after that, um, and I guess you could say this was like a very low period in my life, but um, shortly after that, I found out I was pregnant as well. Wow. And um, yeah, it was kind of like a lot of stuff going on at once, you know. Um, and um, so I ended up moving from California back home to New York, where I'm originally from. And um, kind of when I made that move, a lot of it just cleared up on its own. Interesting. Yes. And um, I'm going to say mainly it had to do with a life decision. Okay. Because it turned out that I actually had a great diet before I got the autoimmune disorder. Okay. Because yes, because I belong to this raw food community called Rossum in Venice, California. So I had been eating healthy for like at least 10 years up until that point. So it was kind of like ironic. Well, here I am eating healthy yet. still I got this autoimmune disorder, you know? Yeah. It turned out that um, it was really more psychological reasons of why I got sick. You know, it wasn't just the physical, you know, maybe it was like a little bit of the physical, but it had to do with more psychological and having to do with the fact that I wasn't aligned with my soul, with my oh. higher self and what my soul and my higher self was wanting me, the path that it was wanting me to be on. So it was kind of like I was way off on the wrong path. So the sickness was kind of getting me back on track. 
interesting. I love how you're able to see the, the pain and the uh, struggle as a teaching moment. How did you, was this after you moved back and it was kind of in hindsight that you started putting the pieces together? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I don't think anyone in the middle of your whole life, you know, coming crashing down or yeah. home, was like, oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the moment, the ego can't, the ego just can't grasp what's happening and it's trying to hold on to something it can control, you know? So, um, so it was definitely in hindsight that I saw it as grace. And so I saw it as, you know, the universe being like, you're just on the wrong path here and we're going to guide you. And, you know, the, the lesson of it is if I had listened, like, to be honest, before I had gotten sick, I had gotten a stream of messages of like what I should be doing, but I wasn't listening. Mm. And so it's kind of like, I feel like our higher self or soul kind of whispers at first and is gently guiding us and nudging us in the right direction. And then it's like, after a while, if you don't listen, it's kind of like, all right, that's it. You know, I totally know what you mean. Yeah. What were some of these signs and retrospect or messages is like, were they, I kind of, I kind of get a feel for what you mean. Do you have any tangible examples? Like maybe um, we had a little communication beforehand and, and some written questions that we prepared. And it seemed like one thing that you learned was that uh, you needed to speak up and to stop doing things you didn't want to do for money. These yeah. were like maybe little warning signs before the sickness that you put, you yes. understood afterwards. I was really miserable. That was a warning sign. I was really miserable, but I didn't know how to get out of the situation that I was in, you know, and I didn't know what else to do for money. So it was like survival. So, cause I mean, even though you could be in the worst job of your life and hate it, but you're like, well, what, what am I going to do? I need to make money. I need to survive. So that was the conundrum, you know? That's the conundrum indeed. Yeah. How do you... In hindsight, how do you, do you, I don't know, any, any words of wisdom? If you, well, definitely. Someone, if someone was in a job that they didn't like, which I mean, hello, anyone listening to this, probably certainly a majority of people might be in that situation. Um, yeah. Keep on exploring, uh, you know, these, these are the other different paths, but I just wanted to touch on that real quick. Yeah. Um, well, I would say on the side try and do what you, what it is you want to do, like mm -hmm. follow your passion and take steps on the side, you know, schedule your time and make the time for that. Mm -hmm. Um, if that's something you really want. Um, and, you know, and, and to go back to what you were saying, um, you know, now in my life, what I've learned from that, um, and this goes back to part of the disease too, is that I was suppressing my feelings and I was not speaking. I was not saying what I really wanted to say in life, mm. you know, you know? And so yeah. it was like coming out in my body and my skin because I was like pushing down all these emotions and feelings and I wasn't feeling them and I wasn't speaking my truth. Um, so, so the, so the, whatever you want to call it, the auto, auto -immo immune disorder that came out through my skin was like speaking for me. And it was like, I hate this. I want to change. So now I kind of just really do my best to speak my truth, to speak my voice, to stand up for myself and what I believe in and, you know, not try and get bullied by society because society often tends to, you know, it likes to bully us, you know. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, how long did it take you to recover back in New York? Um, pretty quickly. Once I left the job that I hated, it was kind of like within like two months. Interesting. Yeah. And did pieces kind of fall together back in New York? Yes. Yeah. I know that you're in your daughter's room right now. Yeah. So you moved when you were pregnant and now you're in her room. Yeah. Like that seems to have uh, emerged or, uh, you know, come, come to appearance. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. How old's your daughter? She's six now. Six. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. So you have a background in 
psychology, alternative health, intuitive healing. You got a lot of certifications in yoga, intuitive reading, body work. Um, yeah. What can you just like retrace this journey from, you know, getting all these certifications, learning and kind of maybe how they how they shifted you taught how they exposed you to like new realities. I'm, you know, I, I, I do eating, eating enlightenment. So enlightenment is like a, it's like a new, a light bulb moment, a new way of seeing reality, like where you get some shifts. So for like intuitive reading, what was, what is that? Intuitive readings? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's kind of like, I don't like to say psychic, but it's kind of like, like psychic readings. Sure. But I would say they're more, mine integrate a little more life coaching and they're more prescriptive. So I don't like to be like one of those psychics who's like, well, X, Y, and Z is going to happen, you know? So. Yeah. But I, I feel like you have a really good connection with intuitive, the aspect being intuitive. And I, you know, not to toot my own horn, but maybe I do too. I've been a huge into yoga, huge into like meditation since I was, I mean, this was in high school. I remember um, sitting up as a lifeguard. I was on a life, I, so I'd sit up and I would, as a lifeguard, you have to be have an upright posture. And then, so I'd sit up and just like concentrate and, and like, it was kind of a contemplative lifeguard practice. I would just kind of say my mantras and this is, and I got awarded for a, the best lifeguard because I was <laughs> so upright and alert. Um, but I really resonate with this whole intuitive thing. Um, were you always intuitive or did these kind of things in alternative health and intuitive healing, did they open those doors for you? Um, I would say both. I would say I was definitely born intuitive. Um, I was actually born with a lot more intuitive skills than I have now, even um, because when I was a child, I used to be able to see spirits, but I closed down the gift. Hmm. So, which a lot of people do, it's actually pretty common. Yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until like years later, well, maybe when I was like 16, 17, I picked up a tarot deck and I just started giving readings for my friends and family for free. So I was kind of like, everyone came to me for free. They all got free readings. Um, mm -hmm. But then as I started like eating even better, I got clearer and when I started doing yoga and made yoga part of like my daily lifestyle, like I do yoga every morning when I wake mm. up and I meditate, mm. that kind of increases it as well, as well as just doing it and practicing. Mm -hmm. So the more I do it for people, the more it develops. So when people come to you for help, I see that you, you got a coaching holistic and intuitive life coaching yeah. You also help people with wellness and things like this. Yeah. Um, do most people come for you for food and wellness and this whole yoga type of thing? I or wish they did. I wish they did. No, oh. more people come because they want like answers. You know, they want to, which is kind of the downside of what I don't like about it, you know, because they just want me to tell them what to do, you know, where I wish, you know, I'd, whereas I want to give them intuitive guidance and let them know what could possibly happen if they continue down the current path they're on. But I don't like to tell them like, this is going to happen and but 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 you know what I mean? And I hate telling people they're with the wrong partner. That, like, that's like the hardest for me or they're in the wrong relationship, which so many people are. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Yeah. And a lot of them have, you know, at least this might be, just apply to where I live because I live on Long Island, New York, and a lot of people aren't very health conscious here. So, you know, I kind of feel like, because I lived in LA where it's like, I don't know where you live in California, but in LA, everybody is health conscious. You know, you can get a green juice right down the street. You can get a smoothie. They have all these vegan restaurants. It's so easy. But in Long Island, I can eat at like one restaurant. That's it. There's <sighs> one organic restaurant on Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. But so, and so a lot of people are not very healthy out here. So I wish that they would come to me for more, you know, holistic life coaching where I could give them, you know, advice on eating and wellness. Um, but it's like, they don't want to do that. They either, they want the shortcut route. You know what I mean? They either want to take the pill or, you know, do Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers, which 
you know, works for a time if you're eating their food, but don't you want to know how to eat for the rest of your life where you don't have to buy food from them, you know? And so, yeah. And for that question, like eating for the rest of your life, do you have to, to go on an intuitive journey? Do you have to go on a journey or is there an answer? For your eating, for what's like, let's say I'm a client and I come to you yeah. and I say, I want to learn to eat for the rest of my life. Yeah. Do you think there's a right answer or does someone have to figure it out for themselves? Um, I think a little bit of both, mm. you know, uh, what I would do first, if you were coming to me for eating would be, I'd be like, tell me everything you eat, you know, throughout your entire day, at what times you eat. And then we would kind of take it from there. Like for majority of people, we'd be eliminating a lot of stuff, you know, and then for some people we'd be adding stuff and, you know, for each person, person, it would be individual, you know? So. Absolutely. And you learned a lot of these, uh, these things about, you know, nutrition and uh, from, correct me if I'm wrong, a Jonas Vonderplates who was a raw food leader in Los Angeles and you also studied with Dr. Joseph Mercola. Um, are these people who taught you some stuff about nutrition and raw food? Okay, so his name is Agenis von der Plantz. Okay, okay, okay. close. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> he has the most insane name. Like, no one can pronounce his name, so don't feel bad. <laughs> Did he have a nickname? That was not actually his real name. He renamed himself. Oh. And he gave himself that name. I don't, he was a, a very strange, unique man. He's not alive anymore. He's not with us. So bless his soul. But um, um, so I did not study with Dr. Mercola. Dr. Mercola is just someone I love, Dr. Joseph Mercola. I feel like he has, he is the number one, number one holistic health site. Like, I don't know if it's just in the United States or in the whole world. So I feel like if you want information on health and wellness, he's definitely the guy to go to. Um, but Agnes was actually a really good friend of mine and I was an understudy of his. So, and I was even able to, he had this beautiful home in Malibu where he had like um, a freshwater well and it went into this jacuzzi. I mean, it was amazing. And um, because he traveled a lot to visit clients, I actually would run his home sometimes for him while he traveled. And I just got to like, just being one-on-one -on -one with him, I got to really learn about like food. Wow. So, and he was an extremist. I am not nearly as extreme as he was. Um, but I definitely learned everything about food and wellness from him. Yeah, because, you know, maybe an association that's popping into my mind is PETA. When I think of raw food, for whatever reason, PETA's popping in my mind. But sometimes PETA, they're seen as extreme. It's a people against animal, uh, people for humane animal treatment. Oh, yes. Sometimes, yes. Yeah, sometimes they're seen as extreme. And sometimes raw food is seen as extreme as well which it seems like you take a less extreme is raw, food, is raw food considered extreme? I think sometimes it is like just the idea that you have to like, kind of when you have that, that attitude, like you have to only eat raw food. Everything else is, is, uh, you know, process, uh, you know, anything that's, uh, like, I got you. Raw, yeah. 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 So I'm not that extreme. Let me just say, I'm definitely not that extreme. He was, I'm not. Mm. Was he extreme in that way or was he extreme? Got you. Yeah. Like he literally only ate everything raw, including like meat, eggs, like everything. Like I actually still do a raw shake every day where I have um, raw eggs in my protein shake. I, I do too, actually, sometimes. Oh, nice. Don't they make you feel so good? You get like a dopamine rush from a raw egg. I, I feel like Rocky. <laughs> I don't just do, I just don't, I don't do just raw eggs. I put them in like, you know, a fruit. Oh, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but I it makes me feel like Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you studied with that one-on-one -on -one connection and that's amazing. I know. I was like, that's where you really learn. Yeah. How did you learn? Like, I'm imagining, like, 
a cooking channel or something like that where you're in the kitchen, but I have exactly. no idea. Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'd be in the kitchen with him and I would just watch him, you know, just by watching visually. So I imagine you eat a lot of raw foods. What do you eat? Sure. Um, so I don't eat, when I lived in California, it was a lot easier to be raw. It's a little bit more challenging out here. Hmm. Um, but I love doing, so like I said, I do raw eggs in my afternoon protein shake like every day. And then sometimes I'll do, um, obviously I do a salad and stuff like that. So raw vegetables in a salad, always covering it with some good fat, hmm. like, you know, olive oil and avocado and a lot of good healthy fats. Hmm. Um, and then sometimes I'll make like a steak tartare, like a raw steak Ooh. and then make a sauce for it. That so that's good. one, yeah, that's one thing I do. Um, and then God, it's been a while, but I used to do raw chicken too. Like you cut a raw organic chicken and then you squeeze lemon juice on it mm. and you let it like sit in the fridge for like a day and the raw lemon juice actually cooks the chicken. Ah. So you put it like in a glass mason jar and then you eat it like the next day. So I've done like raw chicken. Obviously I've done raw fish. So sometimes I'll do raw fish, which is a lot more common. Um, but my favorite is raw steak, like a raw steak tartare is like my favorite. Mm -hmm. And I just feel amazing after it. And it's a natural source of like ubiquinol, which like keeps us healthy and young. Mm. And um, it's just really good. I don't know. Have you ever tried raw steak? Like had a I don't know if I've had raw steak. Um, no I'm, steak tartare ever? I don't know if I've had, um, I, I, it's not ringing any bells, um, but I totally know that meat has like a lot of nutrients in it and yeah. things like that. Organic, grass fed meat, yes. Yeah, ah, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, interesting. So one of the lessons you learned, it seems like from, uh, Ajana, so at least I, what, you, what we were writing about was that you learned to eat for the medicinal qualities of the food you're consuming. Right. Yes. Which I don't think a lot of people do. I think most people just eat what they want to eat or because something tastes good. That's, this is the whole like food is fuel. Yes, exactly. Live yeah. to eat to live. Don't live to eat. Right. Right. Got you. How do you know? I think... Sometimes people struggle knowing the how to tell the medicinal qualities of the food. Like, it seems kind of an intuitive process where you identify like the foods that feel good in your body. Um, how do you? How do you? Like, it's one thing to know in, in theory. Oh, I got to eat for fuel. How, how can someone actually start to like do that in real life? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just like what you said. It's kind of like a trial and error. I mean, definitely, I think it would be wise if you don't know anything about food <clears throat> to get someone like me or someone like you get coaching with us. Um, so you have a basis, a foundation, and then you just kind of experiment. You know, you have to, it's, yeah. it's like intuitive eating, just like your program where you eat something and then you see how you feel after you eat it. You know, maybe keep a food journal if you have to and write, okay, the last time I ate that, I didn't feel so good. So maybe give it one more try. You know, I'm going to eat it one more time and see again how I feel. And you have to be very aware and conscious. You can't be like, you know, I don't eat, don't eat while you're watching TV and stuff like that. Like be very mindful when you eat and be mindful of how you feel after you eat. And then, you know, then it's a process of, you know, elimination and adding, you know, when I eat this, I feel really amazing. Like when I eat raw eggs and raw steak, I feel amazing. Mm. And when I eat something I don't like, maybe I get into like a bad mood or I'm really thirsty, like from all the salt from the processed food. Mm -hmm. Like that's something And whenever I eat processed food or like one time I went, cause I, my daughter who's six years old and she sees these commercials on TV, like, Oh, McDonald's and Burger King, which I don't really let her eat fast food. But then I feel so bad. Cause she's like, you know, all the other kids eat it and I want a, a, a McDonald's meal with a toy. <laughs> So like one time we went to Wendy's and I had a little bit of food from Wendy's and then like an hour later, like I'm so thirsty. And so is she because the food is so salty 
and processed. It's like, so that's, you know, a sign telling you that's not good food to eat, you know? Yeah. Oh my God. I love what you're saying. I call this like a growth mindset where you, but the experiment, the trial and error, the mindful listening to the effects of food in your body. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. I feel like sometimes, um, you might eat something healthy, but then because you're not used to eating something healthy, it either you have an, maybe physically it feels good, but like emotionally you're like, oh, I don't like it. It doesn't have enough flavor. Yeah. Like I know, I think you wrote something about like uh, green juice or vegetable juice where at first you didn't like it, but yeah. then later on you came to like it. Yeah. Like well, definitely- how did that go? Well, this is definitely the case for anyone. If you're eating like a normal American diet, you know, the sad diet, <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> Wait, um, sad diet? Like, like, is that an acronym for, I don't know. Yeah, like the standard American diet. Oh, standard yeah. American diet. Okay, I see. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is sad. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Oh, I'm going to remember that. Yeah, and okay. not only that, but the food pyramid is also like reversed. You know what I mean? Like it's like you have to eat the majority of carbs and then protein and then fat. And really you should be eating majority fat, then protein, then carbs. But um, but anyway, so if you're coming like from a regular sad diet, standard American diet, obviously when you try healthy things, like you're kind of not gonna like them at first. You know what I mean? And because your taste buds aren't used to them, you know, it's kind of like you, you know, just like when you first start doing exercise, you're not going to like exercising at first, you know, (laughs) it's something new. So, um, so yeah, like green juice, I hated green juice at first. So, and what I, I used to drink like celery, parsley, and cucumber. That was what Ajanis recommended. And, um, so I did that. And at first I hated it, you know, I was like, this is so disgusting. And then, um, but then eventually, you know, but you drink it for the medicinal quality again. So I'm not drinking it or I'm not eating that green salad, whatever it may be, because I like it. I'm eating it for the medicinal quality that I'm getting from it. Um, but then what happens is you like down the line, like a month, maybe, or so maybe six months, it's different for everybody. Um, your body starts to crave it because it is actually good for the body. So then the body will soon start craving that. Yeah. But, but you have to give it a chance to switch over to mm-hmm. like that kind of food. It's not going to be like automatic. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Oh, I have something on the tip of my tongue, but I, 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 it's not quite there. What is it? Um, yeah, it's it's kind of being patient with it. I, I agree. Um, so you mentioned like a few key training principles on your website. Eliminating harsh chemicals, eating yeah. healthy, nutrient-dense food, finding what brings you joy, and aligning with your higher self. If someone were new to these things, they weren't familiar with any of them, can we go through each of them very briefly and just kind of talk about like a like a high level perspective about what they are and kind of how someone could start implementing them. Sure. So Great. just name them for me one at a time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we got eliminating harsh chemicals. Um, so that would be very, be very conscientious of your EMF exposure and do everything you can to eliminate EMF exposure in your life. What is EMF? Um, EMF are electromagnetic waves that you get from um, electronic devices such as your cell phone and the TV and the computer. So I actually have a blog um, written on it on my website at kellysantos.org, which talks about like all these different steps you can take to reduce EMF exposure in your life. So um, that in addition to getting rid of like harsh chemicals in your home, switching over to organic brands and um yeah so those are like two examples i got you yeah perfect okay so eating nutrient dense food i okay. love that i love this one uh, yeah <laughs> that's, one, that's one of my favorites yeah so this goes back to like what we were just talking about yeah. like eating food you know really you got to get with a health coach to find out what food you should be eating Um, and just eating like really high quality food, eating organic food and, 
you know, like being yeah. spend a little extra money on food, even though it costs a little more. And, um, you know, can you talk a little bit about healthy fats? Because sure. fats kind of get a bad rap. But I, know. I know they do. They do. First it was fats, now it's sugar. Sugar is really the enemy. Sugar is what you want to stay away from. Um, but healthy fats are like raw avocado, mm. um, extra virgin olive oil, nuts, nut butters. Though you have to be careful with nut butters. You have to make sure that they're sugar-free and that it's like just the nut. Okay. Um, yeah. And it's really important to eat healthy fats every day, you know, like at least 10 to 20% with every meal that you have, you should be eating a healthy fat with it. And the most important thing about healthy fats is that they help process toxins out of your body. They help carry toxins out of your body. And they're the only food that does that. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah. I'm going to remember that because I've always told people like we got to get healthy fats and there's not that many of them. I feel like the list of healthy fats is like I know. less than 10. It's like avocados, olive oil, nuts. Yeah. Uh, yogurt, maybe Greek yogurt. Um, there's like not egg. that many. I know like egg, the, egg. Um, eggs, yeah. not the white part, the yellow part. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know off the top of my head, I'm struggling to come up with more than five, but I mean, well, you have all the, you have all the nuts and yeah. you have all the nut butters that you can make from the nuts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, they're limited avocados, yeah, yeah. Uh, macadamia nuts. Yeah. It's just kind nuts, of, yeah. yeah. I, I do a lot of flax. I do a lot of walnuts. I do, um, flax seeds, you know, all ground. Yeah, oh, chia seeds. Yeah. I do some chia seeds. Yeah. Yeah. Chia seeds. Uh -huh. yeah, so Absolutely. I've yeah. always informed people that like, uh, you know, healthy fats, they keep you full longer. It's like, it's like, coal. it's like coal instead of a quick burning fire, a gas burning fire, which is a carbohydrate where you right. eat the spaghetti and then it burns up real fast like gas. Um, right. and then you're left hungry an hour later, even though you just had a big plate, Absolutely. Uh, healthy fats are like coals. So it, they burn slower and you, you get more contentment for a long period of time. But I love exactly. the toxins as well. I didn't, um, yeah. and I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Roger just taught me that. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> so finding what brings you joy. Um, yeah. Sometimes I think that's a tough one for people. I know. Weak. For some people might say it's weak. I just went to a meditation talk. We were talking about self-compassion and one guy at the end and self-compassion and joy are kind of related. Maybe, maybe not totally, but, um, but he said, you know, I'm not ready for this. And I had really admired his courage. He said, I'm not ready for this self-compassion. He spoke up in front of the group. I'm not ready for it. I feel like I would miss out on my goals if I kind of let myself, uh, I forget his exact words, be nice to myself I feel like a lot of people kind of have a, maybe a block towards even this concept of joy or things like this, compassion, things yeah. like this. Um, what's your thoughts on, on uh, finding what brings you joy? Well, that's so interesting to hear. I can't believe that. That's like self-punishing is what that sounds like to me, what he was doing, you know? Yeah, me and too. That's, but that's part of society. I feel like our, I actually just wrote an intuitive blog for December. Huh. And I was talking about this because I pulled the card dance and celebrate. Okay. Just one card. And um, I was talking about how like as a society, America has forgot, like we're all about work and making money and like getting to the top and, you know, making our whole lives about that where our soul and our spirit didn't come here for that. You know, it came here for the experience, to have a good time, to experience joy, to have relationship, to experience relationship. You know what I mean? It didn't come here to be like, I want to work nine to five at a job I'm miserable at so I can make money, so I can, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So. I remember hearing another story about, um, it was uh, if once you die and you're on the footsteps of heaven, that god or an angel will ask you two questions how much have you loved and what did you learn and um and your answers to that would get you into heaven 
Oh, and nice. I really thought that was powerful. How much did you love? What did you learn? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what it's about. Yeah. Definitely, it's about loving. Mm-hmm. You know, how much did you love? Mm-hmm. You know, that's all the soul really cares about. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's loving everybody. That's loving everybody in your life. Loving what you do for work. Loving what you eat. You know. Hmm. Mm-hmm. If you if be uh, expressing love instead of expressing hate, which a lot of like nowadays, everyone has social media, everyone has a Twitter. It's so easy. We're all like putting each other down all the time and looking for what that person did wrong that we can criticize them or point out what they did wrong. And <laughs> I am shocked because the number of like mean comments that get, not on, only on YouTube. I think it's because it's anonymous. On Facebook, I don't really get mean comments or anything, but when it's anonymous, man, people write some nasty stuff and it's, and it's like coming left field. It's like, it, it, it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. It's, um, yeah. I, it, it, it's kind of, yeah, there's, there's, uh, anyways, yeah, a lot of, um, what about Twitter? Are you on Twitter? Their Twitter is just as I bad. I am, but I'm not like that active. I just like, my blog yeah. just posts it there automatically. So I. Well, Twitter will be the same thing. If you get really big on Twitter, people do the same thing. It's yeah. Like, so yeah. we've learned as a culture that like spreading hate is okay, but spreading love is not something we should do. We should be embarrassed by that or something, you know? Yeah. It's, um, you know, this guy is saying it's uh, not going to be helpful for his goals. Or- yeah. or something and I'm like of course it's going to be helpful like yeah you can be tough on yourself for like maybe a week and then you're gonna like fall into a depression anyways I I actually partly admired his courage for standing up and saying that too so um yeah yeah um and the woman's advice just before the next question but her advice was okay like it seems like I I really respect you for bringing that up but it also seems like a half formed belief where you're saying this, but you're not quite sure why you're saying it. So just be curious. I'd encourage you to journal about where this is coming from. And I thought that was, that was good. It's okay to have this belief. You know, if you fight the belief and get defensive, it's not going to change at all, but you know, to be curious about these beliefs and stuff. And speaking of beliefs, um, aligning with your higher self seems to, uh, be in in alignment with beliefs and everything. Um, That's, how do you, I mean, what's the path to align with your higher self? Like that's, it's kind of a big question, but uh, go ahead and take a stab at it. Okay. I would mainly say meditation and you got to meditate every day. You know, I tell people that all the time and most people don't, um, got to make the time And then when you do, chances are, if you practice it and you do it enough, that you'll hear like a little voice, you know what I mean? Or you'll, everyone's intuition is different, but everyone has a form of intuition. And so when they give themselves the space and the time, they'll usually get a feeling about something they should do or an inkling or like, I really like this person and I want to get to know them more. Let me you know, take some action towards them, or I really like helping people in this way. Let me try and start doing that. Or maybe I should move. Maybe like when I, for instance, when I was sick and I was pregnant, I kept getting signs that I had to move back to New York and that I was going to. And so that is kind of, that's our higher self speaking to us, you know, and I feel like signs are around us all the time as well. It's just people don't, it's like they're closed off. They're so consumed with the mundane of life that they don't, they don't look at life in a spiritual holistic soul way. Meaning like the universe is magical and it's talking to us all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe when you're driving your car and you look up and there's a billboard that has a message on it and sure it's just about a TV show or a movie, but there's a little message on it. And maybe you looked up at that exact moment because you were meant to see that message, you know, and that's a message for you, you know, but we, but we as humans, we discount this. We do. Yeah. Yeah. 
We do. And then it's listening. Sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, I, I feel you. Um, I feel you. I think like when we get, when we create space that we get just more in touch with um, that ability to, to, to kind of look for signs and, and clues and signals and, um, but yeah, when we're running, 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 stress, 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 no space, no space, no space. Right. These, there, these things become very silly. Um, what if, you know, New York, right? People are, uh, I don't know, Big Apple and skyscrapers and running around. You know, maybe maybe someone thinks that this stuff is uh, not useful or anything like that. I'm sure you've gotten that before where someone says, e-, or like, I'm just skeptical of it. How do you handle someone's skepticism? And maybe someone else wants to be wants to be more spiritual, but they say they don't have the time. I get this a lot. They don't have the time to create space. They don't have the time or whatever. Yeah. Say to, well, let's just narrow it down to one thing. What do you say to someone ha- who doesn't have the time, who, the, who the, what they say is they don't have the time to create space, to reflect, to meditate, to get in touch with their higher self? Um, I would say they have to make the time you know, who are you prioritizing? Are you prioritizing other people or are you prioritizing yourself? And you need to be a little selfish and prioritize yourself because no one is going to do it for you. What projects do you have going on right now? Where can people contact you? Um, Well, people can contact me at kelly at kellysantos.org or they can just go directly to my website. And I'm out of breath from <laughs> running. Sorry. Um, and um, yeah, so that would be like the easiest way. Just going to my website at kellysantos.org. And you got some projects going on too. You, you were finishing a book, I believe, or yeah. starting a podcast. Um, what are these about? And Sure. So I just started the podcast last week. Ah. Yeah. So I've only done one podcast so far. And, um, cause I feel a lot, I like, I like just speaking rather than making video, making videos can be so complicated and I'm always worried about, you know, other stuff. So <laughs> definitely <laughs> making a podcast is a lot simpler. Um, and it's called, my podcast is called, um, be a wellness warrior and spiritual badass with Kelly Santos. Ooh, I like it. Thank you. Thank I you. like it. <laughs> yeah, I have a, um, oh man, it's a little hard to tell, but that's too hard, but I have a tattoo up here. And if I pulled it up to my shoulder, there'd be a sign of a spiritual warrior, like yeah, a nice. the sign that I resonated with was from the alchemist. It's a circle with a sword in it. So it's got like the Zen circle and then like a yeah. sword that spiritual warrior. Oh, that's yeah, the book, the alchemist. I, I don't know if you've read that. I've, but. I've heard of it. I think I've read it. Like, Oh, you got to read it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> okay. But so you're also finishing a book as well. Yes, definitely. And just to one point on what you just said, I actually have a little small tattoo, one tattoo as well. And it is a, and I didn't even, when I got it, I kind of, it didn't really have much meaning to me at the time, but now it makes sense. Um, it is a rose with a sword going through it as well. So very similar. Interesting. Yeah. It's kind of like the yin with the yang. The I was just thinking yang. that the feminine, the, you know, the masculine. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So, cause you got to take the good with the bad in life, right? It's not always a cakewalk. <laughs> Interesting. That's the uh, rose and the sword. I, I can see, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Um, True. Yeah, so I've written a book um, and right now it's just uh, in the editing phase. So it's already What's written. About? What's it? What'd you say? What's it about? Uh, it's exactly about what we're talking about. Okay. It's about health and wellness and spirituality. Well, these are signs that you're certainly on your path from, you know, the autoimmune disorder and feeling like you're burning out from inside to moving to New York and, um, you know, starting these things and just bringing a lot of uh, energy and presence right here. I, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. The question I always end with is what's been an enlightenment moment for you or an eating enlightenment? What's been uh, the biggest, one of the biggest 
light bulb moments where you're like, oh shit, like that's, that's how reality is. That's how truth is. That's, you know, I've been seeing things the wrong. I've been listening to the culture's voices and stories and and they haven't been helpful. And now I see the right path. What's been that moment or that, that shift for you? Um, goodness. I don't know. This is a tough question. (laughs) Um, I'm I'll give sure. you a clue because you actually answered some of the questions that I sent to you earlier. You said, um, think of your food like you do your relationships and ask. This is your answer to me. Oh, right? yes. Okay. I remember. I <laughs> yes, I got it. I'm so sorry I didn't remember that. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> I don't have the answers in front of me. Um, <laughs> and I, you know, there's so many, you know what I mean? It's yeah, I know. I know. There, yeah. 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 I know. But um, definitely what I would say is what you were just saying, where, you know, I think we need to start looking at food the way we do our personal relationships, where it's like, what am I getting from this food source? You know, just like Mm -hmm. with the relationship, what am I, I mean, of course, you also want to look at when it comes to relationship, what am I giving? It's not just about what you're getting, but with so many people, women a little bit more so. Um, you guys are a little bit better at this. You know, we tend to not focus on what we're getting out of relationship. You know what I mean? We're, you know, I, I'm a recovering people pleaser and I seem to, it seems like people I work with, they're very professional, but people pleasers. Yeah. Yeah. They're giving, but sometimes not getting. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to be aware and you want to be conscientious of what you're getting from, from your food, just like you are with your relationships. Mm. So I like that. Yeah. It's a very untraditional way of seeing food, but yeah, totally, totally right. Yeah. I like it. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. You got it.